Well, hello. Let's cultivate New Testament love today. You know, in John chapter 15, verse 17, the Bible says, These things have I commanded you, Jesus said, that you love one another. John chapter 15, verse 12 tells us, This is my commandment, Jesus said, that you love one another as I have loved you. Boy, that's a mouthful. John chapter 13, verse 35 says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciple. By what? By your love one for another. You see, the word love in these, in these uh, verses and also in 1 Corinthians 13 is translated from the Greek word agape, which simply means to love by choice rather than by reciprocation. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 provides a detailed description of agape love and what a wonderful thing it is. It says that real love that you and I can have through the Holy Spirit is first of all, according to verse 4, long-suffering. Now that means it's patient, it's persistent and tolerant. It says in verse 4 that it is kind. That means it's amiable, it's compassionate, it's considered, it's gentle. It says, and envieth not. Now what does that mean? That means it doesn't get jealous or resentful or possessive or suspicious of others. It doesn't question others' motives. It's not envious. It doesn't see unfriendly rivalry in the other person in the office. That's what that kind of Christian love is. It says in verse 4 that, that, kind, that this kind of love vaunteth not itself. Now what does that mean? It's not boastful. It's not conceited. It, it is modest. It will not hurt another for its own personal gain. It will not hurt another just to get a possession. The Bible says also in, first, in uh, verse 4 that real New Testament love is not puffed up. That means it's not proud or smug. It doesn't give the impression that I'm better than you. It doesn't behave itself unseemingly, the Bible says in verse 5. And I wondered what that meant. That means it's not haughty. It's not arrogant, it's not contemptuous, it's not scornful, it's not cavalier. The Bible says in verse 5 also that real New Testament love seeketh not her own. That means it's not selfish or stingy or greedy or egotistical or self-centered or rude, but it's generous to, to others and it thinks about the others. The Bible says it's not easily provoked. Real New Testament love is not easily provoked. What does that mean? That means it's not touchy or quick-tempered or grumpy. It doesn't have an unpleasant disposition. The Bible says real New Testament love in verse 5 of 1 Corinthians 13 thinketh no evil. What does that mean? Well, that means that it doesn't hold grudges. It doesn't hold animosity toward others. It rejoices not in iniquity, the Bible says in verse 6. In other words, it's not glad about injustice. It's not glad about discrimination or revenge or unfair treatment of others. It rejoices in the truth, the Bible says in verse 6 of 1 Corinthians 13. That means it's not deceitful. It's not false. It won't tell you a lie. It's not crafty or sly or deceptive or misleading but it's honest and sincere and straightforward. The Bible says that real New Testament love, if we've really got the real thing, it beareth all things. That means it's loyal and faithful and consistent and steadfast. It's not treacherous. It believeth all things, the Bible says in verse 7. That means it's made the choice to believe in the person or the object of its love and it's made the choice not to discredit them. It has chosen to believe in their character. It's chosen to believe in their values. It's chosen to believe in their honesty. That's real love. The Bible says that real love hopeth all things. Well, that means it expects the best, but it doesn't demand it. It endureth all things. That means it's made a choice to persist, to tolerate, to bear, to continue to believe regardless of the cost. The Bible says that real love never fails. 
It's indestructible. It can't be overthrown. It's not baffled or thwarted. It, it'll not be disappointed. It'll not cry, I quit. And it wants, God wants to use us, you and me, as mirrors of His love. Let's make our prayer today, Lord, love through me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, so often we live in an unloving world. So often we live in a world that is confused and that is disillusioned. And so often we live in a world where you see very little love. And Father, we pray just now that you would make us to be shining lights in the darkness around us. We pray, Father, that you would make us to be shining beacons of love to others. Father, we pray that you would help us to shed your love abroad and to others that others might see Christ in us. Father, they will know that we are brethren, Christians, by our love. And we thank you for that. We thank you that we can bring our needs unto you. There are those out there just now who have no love, who are in need of love, who feel no love. Would you wrap your loving arms around them and let them to know that there is that friend who sticketh closer than a brother. Yes, he is the one who teaches us love. He is the one who cares about us. And we 